You know, every, every single business that I've been a part of myself and exited or helped exit has been more of a lifestyle business, right? right. And again, those, those exits have turned out to be very, very lucrative for these people. As I tell all, all entrepreneurs, and again, I practice what I preach is that you need me time. You need yeah. time for yourself and whatever that may be. Me is sports and squash and baseball and, and, what, and my family and working out and going to the gym, things like that. Welcome back everybody to the Founders Corner. In today's episode, I have a very special guest for you. His name is Jay Alberts and he is a founder of Pure Guidance. And the reason why I'm excited to have him on the show today is because he himself is not only an angel, not only a founder, but he also consults and helps other founders, especially when it comes to uh, strategy, mental health, and all those things. So let's welcome Jay. Jade, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm glad to be here, Sep. How are you today? Good. So Jade, I got to say, first of all, I'm a big fan of your, uh, your posts on LinkedIn because you also have your own podcast and show. Um, tell it like it is. Uh, which is focused around founders and, 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 you know, them being just genuine and honest, which I'm a big advocate for. So why don't you give us a little background on you and why you started that podcast, why you started Pure Guidance? Like, why, why, how did you get to this path? Yeah, it's not your typical, uh, typical path, so to say. I mean, I was lucky enough to, you know, become, uh, after I dropped out of university, became a sales rep and, and I was, I found my calling and uh, I was lucky enough to meet some people, become an entrepreneur. We bought the rights to Nathan's famous hot dogs in Canada. We grew it, um, exited it. And then I was like, now what, what's going to, what's going to happen in, you know, in the rest of my life? Like yeah. I took a little time off, enjoyed it and got better at squash and things like that. But <laughs> I, I, I then had some people reach out and say, hey, you've kind of done this in, on, on three aspects of our, of our old business. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed working with the entrepreneurs. I really enjoyed working in different, uh, different sectors of the industry, whether mm -hmm. it didn't have to be tech, it could have been brick and mortar or whatever. And, 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 and I loved it. Uh, but the one thing I did notice was a lot of people were wasting money on things they shouldn't be wasting it on. Oh, whether I it be that. marketing, whether it be other consulting, whether it be uh, you know, anything out there that, you know, every penny matters in, as, as a startup and, and when you're growing. So I, I kind of that's where the, the purpose before profit mentality came behind peer guidance. And I wanted to make sure that if you didn't have capital, that never stopped you from getting the advice you need, the connections you needed, the introductions you needed or or right. whatever the next steps were. So that was very, very um close to my heart and very, as I call it, the world's worst business plan, very unconsulted <laughs> type thing, right? And, yeah. and, and I mean, I, we ruffled some feathers, but I think it was very well receptive. We've been nominated for a lot of awards in the province. And, and I think we've done a very good job. Uh, I, I don't want to say weeding out a lot of the, the crap out there, but, you know, m making people accountable. If you're going to pay, if you're going to be a consultant, well, you don't need to have a 12 or 18 month contract. You should be able to do that work in three to six months because that money that they're paying you should be invested back in their company because th they, they need that money. 100%. And the one thing I always tell every startup is you are limited by two ma major factors, actually three resources the main one which is um which i just generalized with all three but it's money yeah. time and people it's it's the three things you need to blow up but it's the th three things you don't have access to as a startup so it's one of no, those like catch 22s right so you know being a consultant i agree with you 100 percent. i think i think a lot of people out there are calling themselves a consultant but really all they do is they go in there I i've seen some reports where i'm like honestly like a university kid could have wrote this like it's not very in-depth it's not very helpful what what is it that makes it so challenging for startups to find good people to help them in your mind yeah I, you know and, I don't, what, I don't know and, and, and kind of to extend to that what what actually helps startups like what is it what that they need from a start like i i agree with you connections is like everyone will say networking of course that's that's just yeah. like everybody but what do you think most startups need? Because you deal with founders all the time. You talk to founders all the time. You were a founder yourself. I'm just curious, what are your thoughts on that? Like, what do you think people need right off the bat? I, I, I think they need to slow down. I mean, everybody always tells you to run or do this or spend money and grow and grow and grow. You know, sometimes going slow is, is, is more important than running. 
And, and, and the reason why I say that is because you're going to be doing some, you know, some of the groundwork that's going to build, you know, build the cornerstone of your business and, and whatever it is, tech, um, you know, clean tech, ag tech, health science, it, it doesn't matter. But understanding what your clients want, understanding what you want, not thinking that I need 50 clients right away, you know, get two or three clients and really focus on what works for them, what they want, what they need. So that, that is important to, to, to listen to what your clients are asking for, because what you might think is 100% the opposite of, of what they might need out there. So making sure that you're out there, you're going slow, you're listening to your, you know, finding pilots or whatever it is, but really understanding what the need of your client is or the clients, you know, you might have your ICP and it might be totally different of what your customer profile will be. So yeah. really understand what your clients need and what type of uh, product or business that you want to build. Yeah. And I think that's the stigma right now, right? Is, is the fact that if you don't grow fast enough, you're almost dead in the water. And I always have to tell like the, the founders we work with all the time, we're just like, slow it down, calm, like relax. Like you don't, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, and I think this is just misinformation, but I always say it, I say, it takes you 10 years to be an overnight success, right? Oh, like yeah. it's, it doesn't happen overnight, um, necessarily, right? And, and most startups, you only start hearing them, hearing about them after they've been around for five, six, seven years, right? Like, like they kind of almost think those things come up like this, right? So how do you change that mentality shift? Like how do you how do you make them think? Okay, look, it's not an overnight play. It is a long game. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. How do you help them through that process? How do you th help them to think? Look, you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta think. How does this business impact your life? Not only your life, but how does it impact the future? I just think that's through education and communication. I mean, we've been out there and, uh, you know, myself, uh, you know, Peter LaFontaine, Mo Aladdin, mm -hmm. Kyle yep. Kanofsky. I mean, between the four of us, you know, we've exited nine companies. We've been in the trenches. We understand, you know, the trials and tribulations of being an entrepreneur and growing and exiting businesses. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, there, there's so many variables that come in, in that, in that lifespan of, of a business, but, as we're out there, as we're talking to people, as we, you know, I mean, I've talked to thousands of, of entrepreneurs over my, over my time here and even on telling it like it is where, yep. you know, we've interviewed almost 300, you know, 300 guests and we're, we're about to reach 5 million views. It is something that the recurring, you know, having them share their stories, having them share their successes, their failures, you know, failure is not bad. You know, you no. try something, you move on. You ask for advice on something, it fails, you, you move on. So that, that, I think people really start to understand that, that you don't need to, to come out of the gate guns a blazing because no one, very, very rarely are you going to get, you know, funding, whether it be non-dilutive, angel investing, things along those lines. So really, what, you know, really to understand as you want to grow your business, slow and steady is, 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 is really, really good. And then when you figure that out, then it'll be time to run. Then it'll be time to ask for investment. Then it'll be time to really focus on that growth and bring in people and have your whole plan, you know, around that. But you you better know what you're doing. Otherwise, you you could be wasting a lot of money and you might not be around. Do you think that the reason founders do that is because of the pressure that is on them to achieve that kind of level of success at a, such an early infancy yeah i i mean you know maybe it is pressure but i i think it's also the the lack of education entrepreneurship yeah. isn't isn't you know it isn't facebook it isn't amazon it isn't like for you to become one of those companies and think as you said you know amazon's a 30-year overnight success so it, it, it's it's not you know, we have to start telling people younger, whether it be in junior high, high school, early days, what entrepreneurship is really like, not yeah. not glorifying the exits. If yeah. you know the exits that come are, are very, very rare. But let's yeah. talk about what it what is entrepreneurship. If you make yourself into a lifestyle business that supports your family, it's a 
two to five million dollar business, that's generational changing money for some people to, to do whatever you want to do with your life, your kids, if you want to have a lake, lake property or, or travel or whatever it may be. But that's a success. Right? Yeah. That is something that you should strive for and you shouldn't be frowned upon um, if, if, if it doesn't turn into a unicorn because very few do. So that education and that understanding of what a really good business is, I think people need to need to learn. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the biggest things is is right now it's a novel idea to to almost have a profitable business, especially when it comes to software. Um, in the software industry, it's almost like you have to burn cash. But I think after the whole, um, you know, last six months, eight months, um, investors have really pulled back on that concept. It's just not working anymore, right? Uh, it, it's almost like the Ponzi scheme kind of like is, is crumbling <laughs> underneath it all, right? And so it's now they're shifting their attention on how are you planning to become profitable? How are you planning to become more investable are you are you going to survive if i give you this money or is this money is just to survive for the next 18 months and i i couldn't i couldn't agree more with you on the uh unicorns i mean they, they there's only so many unicorns you can possibly have in the world but you're right like why not just have a really solid business model that you're generating x amount of revenue that is you're right generational wealth for years to come how do you educate people like that? How do you, how do you, because the, the, the here's the problem. Isn't entrepreneurship so crazy that you want to go for that big, big win? Isn't that why you take the big leap of faith? Yeah. I, I mean, I guess internally you have to, you have to answer that question, right? Yourself. Right? If, if that's a goal of yours, then great. I mean, maybe it's your BHAG goal and you have other goals, but you know, we have, you know, we've sat down with many entrepreneurs that said, you know what, I'm just, I just want something for me. I want yeah. to be my own boss. I want to, I, I want to work for me. I want to spend more time with my family, with my kids. I, I, I want to do this, right? So, so their, their concept of entrepreneurship and where they want to go is, is already kind of a win if they're able to find a business. I mean, obviously they have to make it successful and grow, which isn't easy, but I mean, most, I think most people have to do some internal, you know, internal thinking and internal reflection on, on what they want from a business and what they want from their entrepreneurship journey. So let's say they're, they come to you, you're an angel, you're thinking about investing into the company and the founder says, look, I, I don't plan to make it that big. I just, here's where I'm trying to get it to. Is that a turnoff for you as a, as an angel investor as, or as even like a, in your experience as a VC, maybe? Well, I've, yeah, I mean, obviously, you, you know, when you, you know, every, every single business that I've been a part of myself and exited or helped exit has been more of a lifestyle business, right? right. And again, those, those exits have turned out to be very, very lucrative for these people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think when you come to, as a, as a, when my angel hat is on and I'm thinking along that, you know, I'm not looking to invest in a lifestyle business, right? Right. Like there are these other ones that are out there um, that that are doing it, right? So I, I think most VCs, it's a, it's you know, a catch I can't speak for people, right? It's a, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to invest in a company that's you know going to do that. I mean, if I said, if we ever set up a fund, and me and some guys have talked about it, saying, hey, I like these these lifestyle businesses, and I do love them. I said, well, you know what, maybe there is a way that we can do it, that we set up a fund and we look for, you know, a, you know, a, a yearly derivative paid back to us or a year, something along those lines where we know the investment is going to be like that. Right. So there's different lines of thinking for different, yeah. different types of people, but most funds are there to probably, you know, at least 20 X their investment or 20 X, you know, the money that people have turned in, you know, totally. as a, as an angel funds themselves are, you know, maybe hoping to, you know, seven to 12 percent type return on on their investment if you put it in there so there is a lot of pressure for companies that are investable that they don't turn into lifestyle companies right right yeah and i think i think you're right the model of the entire vc world or angel world is the fact that i mean it itself is broken right like you're putting in 10 investments you're hoping one hits and that one hit is the one that pays back all the losses of the nine <laughs> right yeah. so that that's the fundamental of it and and i guess yeah you're based on your model 
like that is the fundamental that's why vcs and angels are are in that mindset of i need you to grow it because otherwise i cannot invest in you because then my lps come after me because i didn't give them a return and and so it becomes a snowball effect how do yeah. you how do you think that impacts um like for example uh the non-educational piece right like the fact that we have not had those conversations with the founders founders do not have that idea of the fact that it will take years to develop what you're trying to build it's not an overnight success how do you think that impacts their mental health because you again the reason i'm talking to you about this is because you are you have such direct access to them that most people don't right especially when it comes to peer guidance is you get to see them hands on, like, you know, firsthand, sorry. And, and that's a unique approach. So I'm just curious, what, what have you seen on that end and how that pressure translates to mental health? Yeah. I mean, mental, mental health and entrepreneurship is, is, you know, it, all, all mental health is obviously very important. Right. But right. when you throw the, the entrepreneurship, it, it just adds another, another level of, of stress, uh, you know, whether that be financial, family, mm -hmm. you know, journey that you think that you have to take alone, you're scared to tell anybody because you're going to be, they're going to view you as a failure. Um, you know, all, all those things kind of come into play because, you know, most of the time, oh, it's going great. It's going great type thing, right? Well, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of, of time, stigma around being like, yeah, I, I, I just want to pause there because I want to mention this. I hate when I... I see founders at networking events, especially at angel networking events. And they're just like, all they're doing is bolstering what they've achieved in greatness. And not at no point do they say, you know, I'm, just, I'm just exhausted. Like, can you help me? Like, there's no such thing. Like if you ask for help, you're almost like a weak founder. And, and I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but I mean, the reality of it is, is that people do see it that way. Like, Oh, are you blowing up? If you're not, I'm not talking to you. Like, I need you to be blowing up. But I don't know if I, I, I noticed that a lot more in the States than it does, I do in Canada. But in, in the States, it's definitely like the mentality is very different there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I don't do any really, you know, I stopped working with companies in the States probably six, seven years ago and speaking in the States and things like that. Right. Why? To focus. I just, you know what? I live here. I play here. I eat here. I love right. here, right? Like uh, our kids are here and, and it was really a focus internally for me to say, you know what? There's a lot of people in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, you know, as, yeah. as we've grown, um, that, that need help. I don't need to work with a company in New York or San Fran again. Like we've got people right here at home that I can actually just go for coffee with. Right. Yeah. Like it, it is, it, it is something. And, and that kind of leans into, you know, your question of, yeah, we see it all the time, but they'll actually open up because I truly believe that they don't really know me, right? Or they don't yep. know Mo, Pete, or Kyle, where they're able to be vulnerable because, you know, some of our taglines is asking for help is not a sign of weakness. And we nope. talk about that all the time. Mm -hmm. And when they do open up to us, it, it is like we're part of their family. We are, we, are, we are there for them. And again, we've been through that journey ourselves, cried, punched walls, wondering how we're going to make a payment, wondering how we're going to pay yeah. a bill. Oh we, my God, how, yeah. we have to fire an employee. Like, do we not fire, but let go? Like, you know, it's, we, we know and we understand where a lot of people out there, you know, giving help have never been in that situation before. Yep. And, you know, you, you can't, you can't learn entrepreneurship from a book. And, and I nope. get in trouble for saying that all nope. the freaking time. I'm with you on yeah. that one, Jade. I'm not, you so, cannot learn entrepreneurship on a book. There's no way. It, it's a no. completely different ball game when it's in person. Like you're bang on with the gun. It, it is very gut wrenching. Like, right. There is, there were days with even corridor where your month, you have no idea what's going to happen next month and you have maybe enough cash flow for the month. And you're like, you, you literally panic, wake up in the mornings. Like, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I remember I, when we first started corridor like five years ago, I, I would wake up crying straight up. Like I would wake up crying. Like there's so much pressure on you to deliver. And most of the money you pick up from an angel in terms of angel, at least the first stage of investment, it's friends and family. Yeah. So you feel incredibly tied to that money and you feel incredible. It's even more pressure. 
uh, to deliver. Um, like I just remember those mornings. It was just, it was, uh, it was unbelievable. It was, it was, it was probably one of the worst pains I've ever felt. <laughs> to be honest <laughs> and monetary oh, loss is usually connected to that right like it's like you're about to lose people money like that that is more loss than like oh no i broke something at your house like you know what i mean but yeah but how do you how do you come out of that like you, you almost have to show that grit and mental but like how like you know what i mean i i, I just how <laughs> that's the question the how the how is just asking for help, right? It's a journey. It's a journey you don't have to take alone. And and the one thing that I love about Alberta is that our ecosystem is so collaborative. It's so it's so here to help. And that and that comes from government down, you know, from granting to to, to whatever you want to get to VCs to angels. You you know what? Angels, angels and, and funds, and whether it be someone like Matiquity, whether it be Claude or, or sorry, Jacques and, um, and Brian, if you say, hey, listen, I have a few questions for you about my business, even though they're not invested in them, they'll sit down with you and help you, right? And it's, it, they like that vulnerability, you asking for help. I mean, that means a lot to, to people that, you know, invest in money because every investor has a thesis, like mine is founder number one, MRR, and then things roll down, right? right. I have to believe in that founder. I have to believe that they they are coachable, they're learnable, they're vulnerable, they're able to be to, to be themselves and and ask for that help. And 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 I think COVID was a I, I hate saying this, but I it, it was a, a really eye opener and it and it benefited entrepreneurs and mental wellness immensely because yeah. it kind yeah. of made it okay to ask for help and you weren't lurking in the shadows and and things along those lines and that's kind of when i came up with my story and and even peer guidance like i i like as soon as things were getting shut down i probably got five or six hundred emails saying what am i going to do what am i going to do how am i going to do this and i didn't know any answers to this and a lot of it was well hold on there's probably going to be government support i don't know what it's going to be but let, let's you know do what you can to, to stay alive stay in business things along those lines and, and go from there and even as peer guidance we waived all the fees for all of our clients during COVID to say hey you need your money more than we do you 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 go there and it does and, become you know, a village yeah it is a village that raises and even, you know, even during COVID, like when, you know, we internally as a family, my wife had a mental breakdown and ended up in the psych ward wow. for, for six weeks. And, and I had to deal with my family and I had to deal with our wow. girls and I had to deal with my wife. And, and I've got multiple entrepreneurs asking for help. Like I was struggling, right? It, and, it was and that, hard for me to do. And that puts a lot of mental pressure on you, right? Like there is, I don't think people realize that there, you know, you even venting with me puts that load on me naturally because I'm just an empathetic person, right? Like, you know, if you, if you go talk to someone who's empathetic, they will carry your load, right? Yeah. And they, they may just be good listeners. And Simon Sinek says this, and I, I love this part, is he'll say like, burnout is not necessarily a workload but it's not, it could be the fact that you know people at the company especially during covid this happened because you couldn't go out with your friends you couldn't unleash on them so at work you would unleash on the most empathetic person the one that listened right and so they felt burnt out how did you manage through that burnout because that is a lot of pressure on on you and not necessarily like in terms of physical pressure but like mental pressure yeah, as I tell all, all entrepreneurs, and again, I practice what I preach is that you need me time, you need yeah. time for yourself and whatever that may be me is sports and squash and baseball and, and what and my family and working out and going to the gym, things like that. Mm -hmm. For you, it might be meditation, it might be Reiki, it might be using a calm app, it might be going for a walk, it might be rollerblading, skateboarding, whatever, whatever it is, you have to schedule that time in for you. And, and, and that's something you know, that, that I did. I also, you know, had somebody to rely on, on, on the psychology side with Christina right. Collab. She helped me immensely when I didn't know what to do. Right. I didn't know how to react. I was worried about our children, right. Things along those right. lines. Mm -hmm. And of course I had really good friends that I reached out to and, you know, like they knew what was going on. So I would just be like, I'm overwhelmed. I need, I need to talk to bunny or somebody, right. Like Huge. here, here we go. So it, it, you know, again, I understood it. I did it. I, I, I was able, you know, obviously to get through it and, 
and you know and, and I'm not going to put the burden of my what's going on with me on on entrepreneurs that are probably going through just as you know just as much struggles and worrying about their family losing their house losing their things but you know I'm trying to help them because I that's something that you know peer guidance and myself have become to know in in, in our ecosystem is they're always there for somebody they're always there for going for a coffee they're always yeah. willing to listen so i did not want to take that away from people and go into hibernation so to say and not be there when somebody really needed it so was that the purpose behind i think it's every tuesday you do the morning tuesday coffee sessions is that on Tuesdays? Am I right? Well, that was, yeah, it's uh, Founders Coffee is every Founders Tuesday, seven thirty yeah. at uh, Red's Diner in Kensington, and I that started you know probably a couple of years before. COVID. Oh, is that in Calgary? Or I thought I thought it was in Edmonton that you did it. Oh, we launched in Edmonton and uh, here this year, and now we've uh, moved it over to Wednesdays to Edmonton Unlimited, and they do. Uh, it's called Community ah, Coffee from okay. nine to eleven. Cool. Yeah. So was that the so? You know, for anyone in Calgary, there you go. Reds on Tuesdays. That's uh, that's uh, with with uh, Jade. Um, what uh, what was the purpose behind that? Was that the intention? Educate, get the people together, start letting founders talk with founders. Because I do think most founders do not talk to each other because they're just scared of each other for some reason. Um, and and to be honest, every founder I've talked to, we've gone through the exact same things. It's like it's almost like mimicked <laughs> yeah. like oh i'm i'm struggling with this employee oh me too how did you deal with that you know what i mean exactly why do that, founders I was, I was lucky enough to have access to kind of you know eo and ypo like uh, as a, as a younger younger either entrepreneur or even sales i was i, I was my mentor now gave me access to, to, to YPO and, and brought me to events and things like that. And I was like, man, for just what you said, you know, having those forms and when you sit around a table with eight other founders that are, you know, some extremely successful with YPO and, and up and comers with EO, it was amazing that how little they talked business, right? They talked yeah. about different yeah. things that affected their lives. Um, and, and, you know, and, and the examples you use is right. Like I'm, I have to let this employee go. What should I do? Or I need, I, I need some more HR help. Who do I talk to? Right. The, the people that you were able to talk to, to reach out to there was, was priceless. So that, that was kind of what I wanted founders coffee to be were these people that have that form like network. Cause if you are an entrepreneur, a startup or a small business, you need somebody to talk to. You need yeah. somebody to sit there and go, hey, you know what? You might be in a, you know, in a brick and mortar business and I'm in a tech business, but freak, we, we're, we have the same problems. Why don't we go for coffee and let, let's talk about them? And, and the connections there and the conversations there, like no sales reps are allowed. No, you have to be a founder. Like it, it, it has been, I think, very powerful for our ecosystem. You know, we we have probably summer's usually a little slower. People go on holidays, which is which is excellent. Yeah. Usually we're probably in that 15 to 20 a week that come in having, you know, two to four new new people show up every week. And 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 I mean, it runs without me. It doesn't need me anymore, which is perfect. And and I, I really love what it does um, for our founders. Yeah. And I think that's a big one because uh, like not having the sales guys there. Because I think a lot of times, especially with meetups, um, you know, especially with like Eventbrite, right? Like salespeople are all over that. Like we oh. we do a workshop for founders. We specifically are trying to help founders to understand SaaS world. What is it to build a product? How to take the steps, proper steps to making a product in SaaS. And we'll have people showing up as salespeople. And we're just like, what are you doing here? Like. These guys are f like, they're, they're fresh, right? Yeah. Like, like it's so frustrating and I agree with you. And it's like, you immediately know when you're being sold to, right? Yeah. Versus someone who's just genuinely trying to help. How do you, how do you lock that down? How do you, how do you avoid that? I mean, I, I changed. And the this word. is, this is more of a curiosity to me yeah. because I, we, yeah. we deal with it. I changed the wording. So, so the first, uh, uh, I don't do meetups. I don't do any of that because yeah. I, I I believe you attract the wrong the wrong the right. wrong type of person 100%. that you want there. Uh, but I changed the wording on LinkedIn, so the first two sentences basically says this is for founders, startups, entrepreneurs. 
mm. like that. It's, it's pretty simple. And, you know, every now and then, and even consultants that come in there, like this is not something for peer guidance to vet their clients. Like I don't, I feel uncomfortable if I even wear a peer guidance shirt to, to founders coffee. Like I try mine, not to. Mine is just tattooed on my chest at all times. So I just, <laughs> <laughs> And even when consultants come in there and, you know, they like talk to them and I'll send them a note after. And I said, you know, this is a place for you as a founder to come feel, to, to understand, to ask questions, to be, you know, if you're coming here looking for business, you're in the wrong freaking place. Like right. th this is not what this is for. And then usually you see a couple of them come in there and then I don't see them anymore Yeah, because, yeah, because I mean, they, they thought that this would be a very good place to kind of maybe get some leads and, and I make that quite, I mean, and if you do and you want to take somebody and you find something, you think you can help them and you go meet for coffee and you get business out of that's it, that's a fine, different story. Yeah. That's not what this is for, right? Like people have asked to come in and give speeches and, and, and say, Hey, come on, we'll do this. I'm like, no, absolutely not. Like yeah. this is a safe place for founders. Yeah. One of the, uh, I, I kind of want to take it back a little bit to your comment about like how to manage me time and mental health. I know, I know we kind of went another way. I do want to yeah. like hit home on that. What, what does mean? Like, I know you said like playing sports meditation. I mean, like for me, it's, it's, it's number one. I've realized sleep has a huge impact on me. So I never, I never do early mornings because and again, stigma, right? Like you have to wake up at 5 a.m. You have to put in 15 hours days. But like I became the worst person of myself <laughs> trying to do that. So what does what are some tips and tricks that you can teach on someone who maybe doesn't know what their um, me time looks like or what it feels like? What are some tips and tricks you may have for them to kind of find that uh, personal aspect? Yeah, well, I, I, again, it's very, it's very hard to kind of give out tips or, or pointers on something like that because, you it's know, so personal. all the time I've never it's had so anybody personal. say sleep to me, right? Well, if it means taking a nap <laughs> in the middle of the day, hey, Bob's your uncle, have at her. If you need that nap, take it, right? That makes me sad. I, so I'm the only one that says sleep. Oh, good. I'm, I'm now the lazy founder. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome but i can now use that as an example which is which is excellent <laughs> i am very grumpy person if i don't get my eight hours of sleep so <laughs> oh, i know lots of those people I, I have three of them in the house here but that's you know it. like I, the reason i say sleep is because like you know like in terms of science i'm absorbing while i'm sleeping so realistically my brain is still working <laughs> yeah no for sure right and and I think, and again, that's why I say it's, it's, it's so personal to everybody. What me time means, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like I know my, like Kathy, like my wife, you know, now that she, she used to eat at her desk and, right. and things like that. And, and now she's like, no, I'm not eating at my desk anymore. I am getting out of the office. I'm going to go for a walk downtown. I'm going to take my lunch. I'm going to eat at the Devonian gardens. I'm going to walk to plus 15. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm getting out for an hour. That's my me time during the day where you know, you get an hour for lunch or whatever it may yeah. be if you're an employee, right? So I, I think that whatever the only tip that I would have is whatever it is has to do nothing with your job. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Like, yeah. like, like get out. I don't care if it's, uh, I watch Days of Our Lives and I have for almost 40 years. I will stop in the middle of the day and, 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 and watch Days. Like it only takes me 15, 20 minutes. Is that the soap party. opera? Like the, 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 the so, like the day show? The days of our, you bet. I love that. I've never yeah. seen now you to, to share something. I don't, I've never heard anyone say either. That's exactly, amazing. Right? Isn't that a show <laughs> running on like 20 years or something like that? It's insane. 55, but who's oh counting? Oh my God. <laughs> I got days t shirts, days hats. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. Like, that's like, hilarious. Like, but again, I would have never thought sleep. You would have never thought something like that. No, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, and even little things like when I'm going into a call, I try to get to a call, you know, 15 minutes before and kind of clear my head, mm -hmm. you know, listen to music. I stopped listening to a lot of podcasts because it just got my mind racing. I listen to nothing but music in between calls now because I want to I want to I want to loosen up. I want to do that. I get there and I, you know, debrief my call. I, I'm not going from call to call to call to call to call. There's like yeah. half an hour at least between. Um, you know, call. So again, that, that works for me, right? I don't, I don't take morning calls. Yeah. Well, there we go. Right? I'm so, the most productive at that time. So I don't want to waste it being in meetings. Yeah. 
Exactly. So and that's what I said. Whatever, whatever your 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 whatever you love as an individual, and as you know, find that time to to take that half an hour, an hour during the day to to make sure that you're looking after yourself. What's the ultimate goal with the me time? I mean, I I know the definition for me, but I'm just curious from your perspective. What is the ultimate goal with me time? Well, the ultimate goal with me time is to make yourself healthy. Because if you're not healthy, your family might not be healthy. Your business surely won't be healthy. So I definitely agree with that. You being unhealthy is business is unhealthy because you'll be grumpy. You'll be uh, upset. You'll get frustrated quickly. There's there's a lot of things that the business needs from you and grumpiness is not one of them or you being unhealthy around it is not one of them for sure. I agree with that. Yeah. So I think that that is really the goal of me time is to make sure you are healthy because that that affects everything else around you. So if if someone wants to like educate themselves on being a founder, right? Like, I, you know, we were talking about earlier about how it's based around education on what you people need to understand about what what it is to be an entrepreneur and a founder. What is the best place to learn about that. So let's say I'm an early stage founder, like I'm starting to think about jumping off this cliff with the uh, with all the plane parts, right? What where can I learn more about what it is what it is to be a founder and and everything we talked about at the, at the beginning. Where can where can someone find these resources because I I don't know. I I don't know the answer to that. I have I've not found it. I mean, that's what we teach with Founders Corner. That's the whole point of this uh, podcast and my workshop. But like, if you don't know about that, w- is there a general place? What is, what is there? Yeah, we have, we have some really good, um, you know, whether it be Platform Calgary here um, or Edmonton Unlimited, uh, you know, up in Edmonton where they have some really good entry level, you know, the, the Alberta Catalyzer program. And I know when I when I want to learn about something, I go buy a business for dummies book, a crypto for a blockchain mm-hmm. for dummies, uh, and whatever it is, right? And I and, and 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 I hope no one takes this the wrong way, but I like that this is like startup entrepreneurship for dummies, right? Like right. right here. And I mean, you get to learn a little bit about sales and marketing. They introduce you to the network. They, inter- yeah. they tell you how to network. They make introductions for you. Uh, you know, work on a little bit of accounting. So when you're coming out there and you're at an idea stage, you're really, really early. You're coming out of these organizations with, you know, you, you feel a little more educated. You feel that little more confidence that, okay, you know what, I not only have I met, you know, a whole whack of entrepreneurship and met their alumni and I've got to meet the Jades and the Seps when they yeah. host events and saying, we're going to introduce you a whole bunch of people to you. That's a really good place to start and a very safe place to start, um, you know, w- you know, in Alberta. I feel so I appreciate about you, Jade, is one thing. Sorry. One thing I appreciate about you, Jade, is the fact that you are very inclusive and you do try to help startups. I don't, you're probably one of the rarer Canadians that I know that does that. A lot of Canadians don't do that. And I don't know why. Um, They're very secretive about who they know. And, and it's almost like, I don't know if I'm going to give you this yet. Like I kind of have to feel you out a little bit more. And to be honest, everybody in the community knows Jade and everyone appreciates Jade. So like, I'll give you that right now. Everyone I'm like, yeah, you should meet Jade. And they're like, oh, I already know Jade. Jade is amazing. I love Jade. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I, I guess Jade just knows everybody. But, <laughs> but oh, uh, <laughs> you're very, you're even well known in Vancouver. And I don't even know how that's possible. Because we were talking either. to someone and you know, I'm like, oh, is this what you're trying to build in Calgary? Jade is your guy. Jade wants to build a, uh, an inclusive ecosystem like that in Calgary. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know Jade. I'm like, how? <laughs> but you know that's the power of in my opinion being uh all inclusive and and helping other people and and kind of opening your books to the network and connections and helping people why does that why is that rare in calgary because when we go to um let's say portland uh atlanta um new york they're so much quicker to be like oh you need to meet this guy oh you need to talk to this guy why is that do you think 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it, I mean, it's it, it saddens me to hear that you know you hear people that won't open up their 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 Rolodex to people, yeah. which is which should be happening, right? And and I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna you know there's a little caveat to that too. If someone yeah, comes in there and they're 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 at an idea stage and they say I want to meet some VCs and, and yeah, people, no, yeah, no, that's the, not there yet. Like I'm yeah. not making those introductions yet. Yeah. I will eventually, but let's focus yeah, on but the that, little bit. You yeah. can easily just say. No, yeah. you're not ready for that. Like that makes sense. But like yeah. I'm talking like for example, you know, you've been great Kyle Kanoski, you mentioned him. Also great guy. He's 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 helped us immensely um from day 1. But that's that's what I'm trying to say. That's rare and like, you know, I had I had lunch with him and and another gentleman, uh Brian Chow, um where we were talking about why is it so difficult to create that kind of ecosystem in Canada? or specifically in Calgary, Alberta, um, like why people don't want to help. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I, I really don't. But the, the only theory I've come with is that there's just less deal flow that happens in Canada. So people, there's less Canadians, there's less people that they know. So realistically, it, because of that, there's less opportunity for them to share with other people their Rolodex is kind of that that's the theory I've come with because in, in the States, um, you know, you go there, you talk to someone and they go, well, I know a thousand people. So here, go talk to this person. They'll probably connect you with someone else. And the end result of it is if I scratch your back, you'll scratch mine, but I don't feel that happens in Canada as much. I don't know what it is. Well, I mean, I'm curious. Again, I don't play in other markets, right? And yeah, I know. I know. That's so, why I'm kind of giving you my experience yeah. in the States versus. And, that, and that's interesting. And I mean, that, that it, I guess it is what it is. I mean, I know in Canada here, like, uh, and I'll speak to, you know, even Toronto and Vancouver is in Montreal are much different than our ecosystem here yeah, in Alberta. For sure. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I call it the Prairie Way. Right. We just invest differently here because we're also new as investors. Right. Like we're True. not there's a, there's an investment community. And in now and the startups are way ahead of the investors in, in out here. But you know what, if I if I want to part with our hard earned money and I want to make an investment into a company, I want to make sure that. I, I believe in the founder, I believe yep. in their company, I believe in their vision. And that might take me for two to six months to make that decision. For sure. And I don't think anybody should chagrin anybody for saying that I'm going to take six months to hand you a check, no, whatever a size chance, it yeah. is. I don't care. Yep, I agree so, with that. It's your money. I, you're allowed to. You're allowed to do your due diligence the way you want to do it. Absolutely, I agree. I agree, and I, and I think that that is just the way it's going to be. Will it change here one day? I I don't know, and I probably think my my answer to that would be probably not. Right? Like I know I'm not. You know, if I ever get to a place that I have endless amounts of millions of dollars to hand out to people, I'm probably still going to be the same guy yeah. that's going to, you know, going to do the right due diligence and want to make sure that, you know, you fit my investor theses. And and I know Matiquity thinks that way. I know a lot of the investors at TNT thinks that way. Kyle thinks that way. I mean, yep. you you know, you've been through the investment realm with Kyle yep. and, and, and everything else that goes with it in, in the tech industry. So... I think it's a good thing. I think we help each other a lot. Yeah. We, we, we're invested in many deals with many different funds and we share our deal flow with 190, like at Startup TNT, it's shared with 190 funds across North America. So, I, you know, again, I, I call that the Prairie Way. We're here to help. And, and I think everybody, you know, maybe not everybody, but most of the people in our ecosystem do do that. And I agree with you. I think your the ecosystem you've built around you, Jade, is is impressive and it's amazing. Um, and that's what I mean is like being around you, you can feel that is happening. I'm just saying as soon as you step outside that world, it's been interesting. <laughs> well, 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 we'll find those people and bring them into my world. Then. There you go. I like that. I, I don't think you need an introduction. You just have to... <laughs> Jade, I, I very much appreciate you being on the podcast. I, I love having conversations with you. Um, and again, like just just hearing you out and just hearing what you have to say about founders is is super appreciative because I know you talk to how many episodes you said 300? 
close to 300 now 300 yeah. episodes so you've talked in just the podcast you've had 300 conversations with the founders so we're on episode like 35 i think so <laughs> we're well off <laughs> that target but we'll get there i hope <laughs> no apps and I, I just want to give a shout out to you because i mean i know when kyle introduced us and and now you know now we've done some work together yep. and and again, my, you know, the, my purpose before profit mentality is, is, is aligns with you. And that's something mm -hmm. that, you know, impresses me about you and your team and what you've done and, and you. helping Thank Cindy you. at CarePal and, you know, with upkeep that you're going to be doing and, and even, even helping Sean from, you know, inclusion by design, you know, out of a really tough bind there. So, you know, what you're doing, you know, fits into that entire mentality and, and thank you for doing that and keep on being awesome because I love that that you have that philosophy, that same mindset that uh, a lot of people in our ecosystem do. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Jade. I really do appreciate that. I, I, I'm, I'm like you. My why is the founders. I, I, I put founders before profit. That's my number one key. How do I help you get to that next level? Because I've been there. I've been in their shoes and it's hard. And I yeah. think you, the reason you empathize with them and the reason I empathize with them is because we've both been there. You a lot more than I have. And I can only imagine how much harder you've been <laughs> compared to me. But um, no, I appreciate you, uh, Jade. And I think that's why our relationship is just, this is why I love having you on the podcast. Because it's, it's, for me, it was an education aspect. I wanted to learn from you. So thank you for being you as well. Oh, it goes both ways. I appreciate it, my friend. And I look awesome. forward to our next conversation. Absolutely. Would love to have you back for sure. Awesome. Founders Corner, thank you guys for listening and being uh, in this chat with me and Jade. If you think someone would benefit from this, please do share. Um, the more we, uh, we share this, the more uh, people we can potentially help. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Until next time, Corridor out.